Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, the Cowboys suffered only their second loss of the 1997 football season. It was a heartbreaking 25-22 overtime decision at College Station in Texas A&M. And with me, of course, to talk about the game, the head coach of Cowboy football, Bob Simmons. And coach, first road game in five weeks. And really, for the majority of the football game, the team came out and played extremely well. Absolutely right, uh, Paul. You know, two back-to-back -back, uh, overtime games. I really thought this football team was ready to play. Uh, I thought that we really executed uh, the first three and a half quarters and uh, uh, with five minutes left on the clock, you know, what we got to do is really put this team away and, and we didn't do that. We gave them a chance to get back in the ball game and consequently lost the ball game in overtime. Well, let's get to those first half highlights, a battle of top 25 powers and certainly one of the more unique college football settings in America as the Cowboys go on the road. The, the Corps, the Cadets, the Collies, the Kissing in the Stands, and the <laughs> Cowboys came ready to play, and really good fan support. Uh, and we had great fan support, Paul, at this ball game, and uh, you can see Lonzo mm -hmm. uh, was with us. But uh, we chose, we won the toss, chose to put our defense out on the field, and we kicked it out, and, and really uh, our defense really set the tone at that first series. Nice job of getting pressure. Uh, the, the kids are fired up. Uh, three and out, they're really rushing and, and uh, come up with a third down situation. Mm -hmm. Put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, uh, Brandon Stewart, uh, a nice break on a ball bar safety, Ricky Thompson, and, and then a uh, three and out series, which is really what we wanted to force the punt. And, uh, RW uh, makes a great catch here and then gets some very positive yardage. I think he averaged over 12 yards of return on this middle return and, and, and gave us good field position. What we wanted to do, Paul, was talk about starting fast and uh, we really went up top real fast so to our duck. Makes a great spectacular catch uh, over top of, of a defender. And now we're starting uh, first and 10 down on the five yard line. But that's a great throw by Tony. Uh, put a lot of air on it. Gave our a chance to go up. Really it's a jump ball situation mm -hmm. down there. And makes a great catch. And uh, ours got a knack of coming away with the ball. And, uh, and that, that was a, a great drive for that offense at first series. Great opening possession. It really caught them off guard. I don't think they expected you to throw the football with Alonzo out of the lineup, especially not the first play. But here Nathan Simmons goes to work inside yeah, the A real five. nice inside cut. I thought he was in then, uh, but the officials ruled otherwise. And we come back, and it's a nice effort by the offensive line and Nathan scoring on that first drive. Well, everything works out according to plan as we see the end zone shot. Nathan going over and meeting that win head to head. The defense comes up with a three and out to set the tempo and the offense responds with a three place 62 yard scoring drive. Only 46 seconds off the clock and the pokes on top seven to nothing. Now Texas A&M with their second possession. Well, they come out uh, throwing the ball and I think that was their game plan to really try to get on the perimeter throwing the football a little bit and uh, getting their backs uh, uh, out, out of the backfield. I, I think that's Sir Parker. Uh, but our defense is playing good. This is a special play that they put in. Uh, great execution on, on their part, but we didn't execute our technique. We should have had a check up front. Uh, we wasn't lined up correctly, and uh, it led to this particular play. They fumbled. I thought we were going to come up with it. Uh, but we got to be better down in the red zone. We haven't been, not been that good all year down there. And that's something that we really got to talk about getting good at. They're on the goal line. This is a toss sweep. And, don't have enough defenders inside out and then they take the ball down there and score. But uh, after that score, the defense settled down here. And this is a real nice run by Kevin Williams. He's got to put the ball away. He's swinging that ball with two hands, carrying it like a loaf of bread. And we're fortunate right there, they, they called him down. But uh, you got to teach Kevin how to carry the football. Sets up the offense in good field position. Nice, and again, nice inside in run by David and, and uh, by rather Nathan. Nathan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David Thompson. <laughs> Memories of last yeah, year. <laughs> last year. But, uh, uh, I tell you, our offensive line is, uh, is is really blocking well at the point of attack in this ball game, and uh, Tony Lindsay is making some real nice throws. That's just a great stakes, mm -hmm. a real good first down throw and catch, nice read, and takes a late hit, but puts that ball right on the money, and Stakey does a nice job of knowing where the sticks are, getting the first down. And a, and a big play, because we'd had a 15-yard penalty for 12 men on the field, and Steggs comes up with the, the big completion yeah. for the first down, keeps the drive alive. Yeah, that's, we had 12 men on the field offensively, mm -hmm. and, which was mm -hmm. uh, uh, a mistake from the standpoint of substitution. Uh, but Tony makes a nice throw here to, to Willie to really keep the drive alive, and. Go back inside to Brian Aikens, a play we put in for this ball game. Nice aggressive run by Aikens. Uh, takes that ball down, I think, to the 10 yard line. You can see my offensive line is coming off. We're blocking people. That win's got about three guys on him. 
Uh, Aikens, just like a good fullback should, doesn't go down when the first guy hits him. Well, 18 yard run on the play by Brian Aiken showing some real toughness right there and now back with Jamal Fobbs at the tailback. Yeah, good inside run by Jamal. He had a pretty, pretty good night here uh, running 400 yards and uh, our offensive line is really blocking superb at this point in time. I think that's uh, uh, Jamal like, again. Uh, that's Jamal and then uh, Brian, Aiken. Brian Aiken goes over the top for the touchdown. Well, 11 play, 64 yard touchdown drive by the Cowboys, 5 minutes and 20 seconds time consumed off the clock to answer the A&M score, but a muffed snap here, and it costs us the extra point. Well, you know, our, our bench is a pretty good snapper, and, and uh, he, he actually put that on the ground, and, and uh, we got a fire call, but I don't know if our, our, uh, our kids executed the fire call, but they go back on offense, and their defense does a pretty good job from here on out before the half, stuffing the run game and doing a nice job of tackling Dante Hall, which this is his first game back, uh, Jack Golden, and, is around the ball this game, probably his best ball game, and there's some pressure coming from inside. There's a sack by, I think that's Courtney, Courtney Mallory. Uh, and then uh, uh, I, I think that's uh, Terrell. This is a good job by Courtney get, getting off, and he's been held. Being held, and he still makes a sack. Still makes a sack, and what they, what now what they got to learn to do is just get up and get off the field. Uh, good snap here. Uh, we got a return call. I think it's a middle. RW makes a catch. He, this is an outside return. He should have stayed in bounds. Had an opportunity to stay in bounds there to get more yards, but I uh, guess he was going too fast. Very close. 19-yard return by RW. Sets up the offense on the third Great six. run by Fobbs. I think he was just one block and really taking this thing the distance. Uh, uh, nice, nice blocking at the point of attack. And uh, I think the offensive line had a sensational night. Come back with the same play. Uh, their defense this time has the advantage on us, but our offense is doing a good job. This is our, our rat play. Nathan should have probably kept that a little bit more to the inside, probably got a little bit more out of it. But they stop us where we punt it back. It's going back and forth now. It's somewhat of a, of a defensive battle and, and uh, a nice punt by uh, our, our punter, Jason Davis. Our defense comes back out and more pressure by uh, Terrell. Comes back and makes that sack. Him and uh, I think that's Zach Aiken. That's well, a good effort by Nalls. Yeah, yeah. That was Tabor, Tabor LeBron. That Tabor LeBron. Mm -hmm. They're sprinting now and, and uh, it squeezes the pass. Their tight end is a pretty good player. Uh, but, but they try to run inside, they fumble it, uh, and they put the ball on the ground about three or four times. And uh, Fortunately, they came up with it. I wish we would have came up with it. Mm -hmm. we, we came up with one later on. The ball took some friendly bounces for A&M, but that takes us to halftime. It's 13-7, to and after a very solid first half performance, we'll be back to take a look at the second half highlights right after this timeout. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, Coach, hostile environment, 13-7 to lead. You had to be pleased with the first half performance. Well, I was. I was really pleased with how our offense in particular handled the crowd noise and, and did a good job, Tony Lindsay, and really the whole offense. And uh, we came back out the second half really wanting to establish the run. Uh, we go inside to with our big fullback and Nathan. We're really knocking them off the ball at this point. We really tried to go down and get a score. Nice run by Nathan, a good acceleration. Uh, for nine yards, and the offense is really doing a good job at the point of attack, knocking them off the ballpark. Well, the offensive line, good pass protection here for Tony Lindsay. Well, he avoids one, but uh, a great job of scrambling by Lindsay as he turns a loss into a positive. Forced to punt, now the defense will be back out, hoping, hoping for uh, a stop of their own and giving us some field position, but tough wind right yeah, there. Tough wind, and he didn't blow back, but our defense came out the second half, and they had to win. They really tried to go up top, and, uh, we're fortunate there that uh, he overthrew that. Uh, this is a play that they had a little bit of success on all night in terms of, of the sweep. But our defense is really playing hard at this point in time. There's some pressure there. Uh, great play. I, I think that's uh, uh, Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams, mm -hmm. nice job. And we forced him to punt here. Uh, and they had to win. Their, their punter is leading the nation. He does a nice job of kicking in the end zone. Oh, a great close there by Kevin Williams to break up the pass, and Oklahoma State now at their own 22. Lindsey scrambling out of the pocket. Well, that's that's the one danger that that, uh, that Lindsey offers. Once you, you pressure him, he can uh, get some plus yards. He actually does here back to back and keeping the drive alive. We actually had two first downs because of his ability to scramble. We go back inside and, and run a, a zone play. This is a nice run by Jamal Fives. Uh, and their offense is, is really starting to click right now. The offensive line is blocking. 
five, he's got his two hand on that ball, he's carrying it correctly. He's just got to get up and go east and west instead of north, rather than rather north and south instead of east and west. <laughs> well, Jamal Fobbs, 12, carries 101 yards on the day, 8.4 average, and now the big guy, Brian Aikens, back up the middle. Uh, that's a good job of Brian keeping his legs moving and getting the first down, and uh, we went back inside. This is a, a naked that we saw, nice execution by Tony, got that ball down to, uh, really got it down to the, about the one yard line, and. Uh, eventually end up uh, scoring, but this is a, a play off the fullback play uh, with the quarterback naked. Uh, nice fake on the defensive back, and uh, uh, Tony does a nice job of taking this ball down to the one yard. Well, he's an exciting player to watch. Had 71 yards himself on 18 carries, and he will get a chance to see him here taking it over the last two yards himself for the touchdown. Actually, uh, a rollout this, here. This is a rollout run pass option, and, and they, they covered the receivers. Uh, and it gave Tony a chance to really uh, show his ability. This is a two-point play, Paul, that we decided to go for. And again, we thought the play was there. It just wasn't blocked right. And uh, this is now an ample opportunity for us to go up again. Uh, they fumbled. This is one of the turnovers that we, that we do get good penetration by the defense. Uh, I think Jack Golden came up with it. Now, Coach, well, there's a question here. We got a 15-yard penalty for Sullivan. What was well, that? Well, the, the call was our defense got up and ran off the field and put their hands in the air, and the official thought that that was excessive celebration. Uh, Questionable was, call, to say the least, but the offense trying but, to put some points on the But the board. offense comes back and, and really does a good job uh, respect of the call of taking the ball back down to about the 15-yard line, and, and uh, uh, Jamal is doing a nice job of running inside. And, and I'm talking to the two players. <laughs> I'm giving <laughs> them an example right about <laughs> about uh, about why the officials call. It might have been judgmental, but you know those officials will make that call. And, and the call it at that particular time uh, was uh, let to led to the three points here. The Cowboys convert uh, the turnover into a field goal, 22 to seven lead, and A&M back on uh, back on offense. But the defense stiffens here early in the fourth quarter. And the defense uh, is just really, as you can see, playing hard, lights out, and and. Uh, uh, which is something that uh, we've been talking about our efforts. This is a nice heads up play by, by Terrell. Uh, stayed at home, uh, read his keys, did a nice job of tackling for a loss. Nall stayed at home on the tight end screen, bringing up fourth and 12. Fourth and 12, is, he scrambles and Nall's come back now uh, and he fumbles right there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, they call him down and well, we stop Stabler him. Rule, I and uh, I think we, we cut some plays out. Yeah, this is well, on that last drive here, and this is when they scored. Uh, oh, they make it 22 to 14. Right. They responded, make it 22 to 14 again. Texas A&M uh, takes over after a punt and then convert here on a 25-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, this is, uh, we're in man coverage, and uh, really when you're in man coverage, Paul, you gotta get a lot more pressure on the, uh, on the passer. This is a, a play that we call timeout for, and what we didn't do on defense is really execute the defense that was called, and consequently led to the going into overtime, and, and the offense comes out in overtime. Well, we're not there yet. Actually, we're oh. still trying to win this thing in regulation, okay. Coach. <laughs> well, this is this is a good run by five. We got, we got about 43 seconds mm -hmm. left. Uh, we're trying to get in field goal position, and uh, this is the dump. Nathan needs to get upfield uh, and try to get out of bounds, but uh, we only get up to about the 40 five-yard line, and, and this is just a last-ditch effort. Sitting as a kick to 60 yard in high school. yard in high school, that's right. And has the state so, of Oklahoma high school record. Right. And it was online, but online, just Online, just a little bit short. Well, even after all that, it's a 22-22 football game, and the captains on the field were going to overtime. Texas A&M wins the toss, and they choose to uh, be play defense first, and here we are in our first offensive possession. Well, this is this is a good sprint out, and, and this is, this ball's got to be caught. It, it was a, a comeback route by I think Willie Grissom who dropped it. Then we go back to the run. Uh, we pick up about six yards. Now it puts us in a crucial third down situation where we really got to uh, get a first down. We don't get it, and then we got to settle for a field goal. Well, Tim Sidness comes out a 39-yard uh, field goal attempt, and it is good. And the Pokes go on top, 25-22, after their possession in the first overtime. But A&M responds quickly. Well, they come out and, and they they've been running this sweep the whole ball, ball game, Paul, and they, they get uh, 10 yards there, come back and run the fullback on an inside play, and, and they score. And, uh, and again, that's that's a great comeback by them. 
we had an opportunity to put that ball game away in regulation and didn't get it done. There are a lot of positive, Coach, over 400 yards of offense against one of the toughest defenses in the nation. And the nice thing about college football is redemption is only a few <laughs> days away, only one week away. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, we'll be back with more on The Bob Simmons Show. TD's two-minute drill sponsored by Farm Credit. For ag, for life. Welcome back to The Bob Simmons Show. This week on TD's Two Minute Drill, Tom and Wade Pearson take us behind the scenes to meet Dan Austin, Oklahoma State's Director of Strength and Conditioning. It's been said many times that your work with the players during the offseason created a positive winning mindset. Tell us, what were those drills like during the summer? Uh, during the course of the summer, what we try to do is uh, develop a cohesive with the team development by doing things together, conditioning-wise, lifting-wise. Uh, even at the end of all our conditioning, what we did, we set aside uh, that was prayer. As it, it took place before I got here, but we have a lot of guys that's very religious on the team and uh, that have a, a good belief in a uh, big belief in God and. All this right here has brought the team close together, just doing a lot of things together over the course, over the course of the summer. Obviously, you believe in the old coaching adage, strong physically, strong mentally. Most definitely. I think if a team is going to be physical through the year, then you definitely got to get in the weight room and lift weights. You got to lift weights. You got to get out there and you got to run. You got to condition it. Not only do you do it during the course of the, se during the, course of the summer, but you got to do it during the course of the season as well. That means that you get in the weight room and you got to uh, keep your strength up and you got to get stronger during the course of the season as well as conditioning. Make sure you keep your conditioning up, that you have never be a relaxed stage there because at one point, uh, at sometimes you do relax and you fall behind. If you get the athletes who are physical tough, then mentally they believe that they can handle whatever adversity is put in front of them. We kid around a lot about this, but you rarely, if ever, raise your voice to get a point across. I think uh, if, if you show respect, then you get respect, and not necessarily do you have to raise your voice to get a point across. And I think if you got a, a good relationship with the athletes, they're going to understand, and they're going to trust and believe in what you say, and not, they know you're not going to steer them wrong. So what we try to do is work with the athletes and give them a good example of what we want them to do. And I think as well as my staff, I have a great staff that works with me, and we try to set example as well as being examples. A nine-time world powerlifting champion, you too stay in shape. Well, I try to work out as much as I can. I've taken this year off from competition and uh, really focus in on the job here. Um, but I still compete, yes. You also work with other sports, do you not? Yes, currently right now, uh, one of the sports that I'm working with is men's basketball. And uh, so that race, that's my other sport besides football. Yeah, there are no short days, and the thing that, as strength coaches, we have to realize we're here and we have a job because of the athletes. The athletes are not here because of us. Uh, you know, Paul Dan has done an excellent job uh, since he's been here, and uh, one of the things I've always believed in is you've got to have a great strength coach, and uh, he's a guy that's spent a lot of time with the players, and the players believe in what he talks about. You can tell he spent a little time in the weight room himself. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Truly a great asset to the university, not only this year, but for the football team in years to come. But we'll be back with more on the Bob Simmons Show after this timeout. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, Coach, week eight of the 97 football season is in the books. So let's take a look at the Big 12 Conference football standings. Here we start with the South. Things are tightening up there in first well, place. Well, I tell you, we got three teams as tied for first, Paul, and it's going to come down to uh, – whichever team gets hot down the stretch for this uh, Southern Division Championship. And uh, I like to think it's going to be us. That's yes. right. It's a three-game season now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, three and two, three and two, three and two. We play Texas Tech, Oklahoma, and Baylor still. And let's take a look at the Northern Division. Nebraska sitting on top, already having the victory over Kansas State. So unless they should stumble unexpectedly, they appear to be in control of that division. So uh, I think everything kind of mm -hmm. taking shape as expected up north, but a dogfight down here in the south. Right. Coach, uh, this week, Bedlam heading down to Norman to play the Sooners. Well, looking forward to it. Naturally, when you got an in-state rival, both teams are going to be ready to play, and uh, our kids are going to be ready. No doubt about it. I, uh, like, like we said, redemption's only a week away. I'm sure <laughs> the boys are all looking forward to this week's battle in Norman, a 1 o'clock kickoff. Folks, you'll want to be there. We want to thank you very much for joining us this week and hope that you'll tune, again, tune in again next week on The Bob Simmons Show. Good night. <laughs>